Exodus chapter 14, verse 9. Exodus chapter 14, Ouch. verse 9. Someone was asking me this morning, did I notice the Sunday school board? I did last week, and uh, someone had told me, oh, I believe that was Friday at the, at the hospital, that a lot of church family would be gone, and uh, nevertheless, the board was up from last week, so God's a good God, isn't he? Thank the Lord for that. I will be sure to hold that over their heads when those return that were not here. I hope y'all make a list and turn it in to me so I can aggravate them. No, no, no. Uh, in the 14th chapter of Exodus, starting at verse 9, I guess there's a couple of things we'll look at. But one of the things we would, the thing we would like to finish up with is continue to go forward. Keep on, keep going, keep pressing toward the mark, keep going forward. There'll be many things in this life, the longer you go as a child of God, the more things that Satan will throw as stumbling blocks or try to diminish our faith or steal our joy or even rock our testimony to such an extent that we'll begin to complain about what the Lord has done for us. I hope that you're not in that crowd this morning. I do not certainly want to be one of those that are complainers or murmurers. I want to be one of those that are worshipers and praisers, praising the Lord for what He has done. But as, as you continue on, Let's look at, at this instance. Uh, the Lord in between two groups of people. One is the people of Egypt and Pharaoh. The other is Moses and the people that are going to be the, called the uh, children of Jacob or followers of Abraham. Let me read a couple of verses to you in the 14th chapter of Exodus. Let's start at verse 9. The Egyptians pursued after them. That would be the children of Joseph. All the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen, his army, overtook them in camping by the sea beside, I, I don't know how to pronounce those names, but uh, Belsifon, I, I did a poor job this morning with, uh, I don't know how you and your Sunday school classes pronounced uh, Jairus or Jairus or uh, Flebitus or whatever, I don't know. Verse 10, when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. You remember that phrase anywhere in the Christmas story, sore afraid? Were not the uh, shepherds, weren't they sore afraid? I mean, they were scared to death. This is the, the frame of mind of the people uh, that are following Moses. And the children of Israel, last part of verse 10, the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. They said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Let's read verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they may go forward. Father God, I pray, Lord, that that would be the, not the epithet, but the emblem, if you will, the greeting that comes uh, and greets people as they come here. That, Lord, we're not a progressive church in the sense of a liberal in our theology. We are a progressive church in the sense of, Lord, we want to know and we want to follow your word. And, Father God, whatever you tell us, the direction you show us, and, Lord, what you enable us to do, we will do that, Lord. And we will not do it with murmuring, and we will not do it with complaining, but we will do it with praise, and we'll do it with fervor, Heavenly Father. With all of the, the faith that you deposit within us, Lord, we will follow, follow on to follow after thee. I would ask you, Lord, today for anything that might be impeding the spiritual progress of this church, the spiritual growth of this body of believers here. I pray, Father God, anything in my life, anything in our lives, Lord, that you might uh, not just mention it to us, but, Lord God, that you might reveal it to us, that we might confess it for what it is. If it's against Thee and we are, we are doing things that are outside of Your will, we are not doing things that are in Your will, then, Lord, it is sin to us. For him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Help us to confess it as what it is. Lord, depart from it, turn away from it, 
and turn, Father God, to the righteousness of your Son, Jesus Christ, so that he might be our all in all in this life. I pray, Father, that uh, if some would be trying to determine another course, some would be questioning today, I, 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 don't, I don't know whether I can go forward. I don't know whether I can follow. I don't know whether I can be a part. I don't know whether I can be committed any longer. Help us, Lord God, as by the Spirit and the Word of God to diagnose that for what it is. It is a temptation from the evil one, but Lord, Your Word is to go forward. Your, Lord, your Word is to trust and obey. Your Word is to stand fast, hold fast to the power and to the faith that Jesus Christ has given us. For Lord, we ask everything we ask in the blessed Holy Name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, now, there are two directions to go from where you and I are at right now. We can go forward with the Lord, or we can turn back to the weak and beggarly elements of the world. Uh, one of the phrases in our Sunday school class, and I really don't have a definition. You'll have, to, you'll have to struggle with that as well as I do myself. It said the question that we have seen people come into our fellowship, as was said in the lesson, and we have seen it here. We've seen people come into our fellowship and maybe come through or be baptized or, or make a profession of faith and then be baptized. And we have seen them over maybe a, 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 time, a period of time that they would just sl uh, slowly fade away. Now, the lesson writer was saying that we need to go to them, we need to encourage them, we need to pray for them, and we need to witness to them that you don't need to turn back, and you don't need to turn away, but you need to keep your face, as Jesus did, as a flint toward Jerusalem, knowing what He would suffer there, but knowing this, the glory that is set before us will far surpass any of the missed opportunities or the circumstances that we have faced in this life. There is nothing going to compare for a child of God when we first see the face of Jesus. So don't ever turn back when you have a desire or you have a question. Can I continue to follow? Can I continue to walk? Can I continue to stay on this way? Lord, where are you in all this? Hold fast to the unchanging hand of Almighty God. For that is exactly what the devil would have us do is to turn back. Remember, remember in this particular passage right here, when the people began to complain, they were at a point where they could go, they were fixed in, they were hedged in. As I read to you, they were hedged in before I just used the term Red Sea. The scripture here in the first few verses used the sea, but nevertheless, they were between the water and the Egyptians. And they had been led there by the express command of Almighty God. Moses did not lead them himself. He didn't bring them out here to this place and say, which way is the wind blowing? That's the way we're going to go today. He was directed by the Lord himself. And the Lord himself in the daytime, he was a cloud that was before them. In the nighttime, he was a fire that was before them. And in this very case, he comes from before them and goes behind them so that the Egyptians could not get to them. I'm saying wherever the Lord leads you, to whatever He leads you, He will carry you. He will see you through. Now, it, I know that sometimes we get to a place and we say, I just, oh, I, I don't know if I can go on. Sometimes that, that, um, that, problem, would be, uh, that problem would be financial. I imagine most everybody in here that has some um, obligations in your life, you have hit up on a financial difficulty. And some of those times, it might have been a choice like this. Lord, if I put any money in the offering plate, then I can't make the, I can't make the washing machine payment. And you know, I could tell you all kind of funny things like that. I, I will just say this to you. When you get to a point like that, you continue to trust the Lord. You continue to look to Jesus. And I'm going to say this. I'm not going to tell you to put your money in a plate. I'm going to tell you to trust Jesus. I'm going to tell you that God does not need your money, but God needs you, and God needs you and me to trust Him. I'm going to tell you that sometimes God will lead us to a point that we have to make a conscious decision. Lord, in order for me to follow you and commit to what you want me to do and to go forward from here, I'm going to have to leave this off. It may very well be that God has brought us to that crisis of belief so that we would leave something off of our life that He is saying it is excess baggage, it is a weight, it's like a ball and chain on you, but yet if you will just trust me and go forward with me, I've got, I'll lead you to the pasture that are green and the water that is still. 
Have you ever seen the Lord leave you in one of your problems? Child of God. Have you ever seen the Lord? Have you ever prayed a prayer like this? Lord, I don't see you in this, but I know that you're here. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to go through this storm, but I know that you're here. Have you ever prayed a prayer like this? Lord, why in the world did you lead me to this? I don't see success. There is nowhere in my vision that I see success. And you know what? That still small voice will whisper back to me. I believe the same thing that he was whispering to Moses, that he was whispering to the people, is that the just do not walk by sight, but they walk by faith. And if we think that God is going to increase our faith by letting us see all the highways and the byways and the ins and outs and all the mountains before we get to them and show us how He's going to get us over those mountains, our faith would still be like we're drinking milk from a bottle. But as we come to those mountains, and there's no way to go around it, that financial obligation that you've assumed is so great that you can't, you can't see any way out of this fog. You can't see any way out of this battle. That, uh, that doctor's prognosis that he has given to you that says your disease is incurable. You've got six months, you've got eight months, or you've got six years to live. It does not matter what a doctor says to us. It does not matter what a banker uh, d decides that he's calling a note home and that no longer will there be giving you any leniency on that debt. I will say this to you. God is the same way in that venue. There comes a limit. There comes a time when God says that He is long-suffering but not ever suffering and that God's going to call that note. And we owe God a note due to sin that we cannot pay. And Jesus Christ has already paid that. So let us come to the mountain of Almighty God. God that burns with fire and know that God will not burn us up but the fire of Almighty God fell upon His Son that the grace of God might fall upon us. How does that picture show, shown right here? The people in verse 9 let me refrain or refurbish my uh, mind. The Egyptians were pursuing the people uh, can I call them the Israelites? That would be the term I'll use. The people that were following Moses. Now, they were not fleeing, but they were leaving, being led by God, the land of Egypt. If you've been in assembly any time in the last while, Brother Russ has, has been uh, using Exodus, and now he's in the tabernacle, but he has showed us the Exodus from Egypt. And one of the things I want to bring to your thought right here is this. How quickly do we as a child of God forget the bitterness of, of that dry desert called sin. How, how many times does the devil come and paint, boy, you were having fun then. It was easy then. You didn't have these kind of problems then. No, my friend, we didn't have the kind of problems that we have as a child of God. And if you do not like me saying it, it's not easy to walk by faith. Does, does that hurt anyone? Does that offend anyone for me to say that? It's not an easy thing to walk by faith. I will say this, most of the world cannot walk by faith because they're lost. And I would say even within the body of Christ, believers, oftentimes our faith is challenged. That's exactly what we see on this day. They had seen what God had done in Egypt. He had, if you will, He had destroyed that nation. He had broken it in pieces. And they, the people were sent out with fortune, with gold, with silver in their hands and told by Pharaoh, get out, get out, get out. Go and serve your God because the firstborn of all the families of Egypt, both uh, human and animal had died in that night. When the death angel passed through that land, the Lord said in the 12th chapter, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. You need to know this today. The blood of Jesus Christ cannot be washed away. The blood of Jesus Christ upon your life cannot be lost. It cannot be dampened. It cannot blind God. No matter where I'm at, no matter what sea, no matter what mountain I face, my, my God is there before me. His goodness and mercy behind me. You can trust in God. So don't turn back. Now I don't know to who or for what, probably just for me, that this is coming forward. But my delight and God's delight, my God's delight is in this, that we simply trust Him. There's a picture, uh, not that's painted, but it's painted by words. I believe it says, a picture's worth a thousand words. Picture this. 
picture you or picture someone. Let's just take Chuck, okay? Chuck's in the pool. And Perry is two years old, which he's older than that now. But Perry's on the side of the pool. And Chuck is standing there in the water. You got this picture in your mind? I know you do. And he says, all right, Perry, jump. Daddy's going to catch you. Now, what does Perry see? Perry sees the water. I see Daddy in the water, but I see the water. And Perry says, I can't swim. And Daddy is pleading, come on, son, just jump, just trust me. Daddy loves you, Daddy's going to catch you. Now, if you would then leave off the side of the pool. I, I believe Chuck would catch you. Have you, ever, have you ever had to deal with your child in such a way? All right, just trust me now. Just trust me. <laughs> my mama would tell me that. She'd be putting that old sewing string around teeth in my mouth, and I got a death lock on her hand. <laughs> I'm not going to pull it, son. I'm not going to pull it. I'm not going to pull it till you tell me. Well, I'm never going to tell you to pull it, mama. And I would hold on that hand. And then I would make her get her hand off of that string. And then we would sort it at a standstill. I ain't going to pull it. I ain't going to pull it. I tie it to the door and beat the door. You ever, you ever tie a string on the door and not pull the tooth? I guess I'm the only wimp in here. Boy, I just did not like it. But my mama sometimes, she would be fixing it. And what she would do, just a little snack. And you know, the tooth just wiggling in there. If you were to buy on a hard cracker, it would probably fall out. But the thought, the fear, there may be some of you here, there may be someone here today that you have such an overwhelming fear of publicly getting up from your seat and coming down here to an altar and pleading your case with Jesus Christ and Jesus is just saying this, come here, come here, come to me. Is that my brain or is that light? Okay. I thought I was fitting to fall out. All right. I didn't know. But that's what Jesus is doing by the Spirit. He's saying, come here. He's saying, just like Chuck, come here, Perry. Just jump in. He's saying, like Mama, I'm not going to do anything, but it ain't going to be any better till we get that thing out. And you're going to be, you're going to be having anxiety. She didn't use the word anxiety. She said, you're going to be scared to death till that tooth is out. Why don't you just let me go ahead and pull it out? It'll be done and be over. Why don't you, as by the Spirit of God, just let Jesus go ahead and get that sin out of you that He might place within you the faith of Almighty God and then you'll have a peace that will pass all understanding. Just like jumping in the water. Just like, all right, Mama, get it out. Jesus is the only one that can get that sin out of your life. Jesus is the only one that can put a right taste in your mouth. Jesus, if you will, had removed these people from Egypt. And I looked in my Bible and the maps in the back, and I wanted to see exactly where, if, if it were on the map, of where these people were when they were between the sea. And you're, you would be somewhat familiar because there's a lot of controversy in that area today. Uh, the Red Sea, where uh, they call them these, I believe they're Houthi or Houthi rebels in Yemen or disrupting the sea lanes. And on it, at the top going north in the Red, Red Sea, you'll find the Suez Canal. Somewhere in that area is where these people with Moses... They are, they are locked in. They are shut down. They can't go forward because of the water. And they can't go back because of verse 9 with all that the Egyptians, with all that the Egyptians had seen in the last few weeks or maybe the last uh, few months, if you will, the, 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 the wreckage that had happened to their nation, their nation, the death that had taken, the mighty hand of God visiting them, and every one of their gods had submitted because their, their gods were idols, and everything their idols stood for had submitted, and God had destroyed the Nile River. He destroyed their water. He destroyed their crops. He destroyed everything. about. He destroyed their confidence in Pharaoh, and Pharaoh himself decided our gods have let us down. Our gods are no match for this God. Get out of here. Get gone. Go wherever your God wants you to go. And now 
he finds himself, Pharaoh does, what have I done? I have let all these people go. They're our slaves. They've built the nation. They've gathered the crops for some 400 plus years. And now here I am without all of my slaves. I don't know what happened to me, but we're going to go get them. And he fixed up about 600 chariots, and he himself in a chariot. And now in verse 9, they have got to where? They have chased after some days uh, that uh, the people of, 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 of Israel, or going to be Israel, have now led, uh, been led by Moses, and Moses led by God. And here they are encamped by the sea, and they're, they're hedged in, if you will, by the water, and there's no place to go. And then all of a sudden, off of the mountainside, coming down into this valley, they see the armies of Pharaoh. Now, there's not but two things can be done. Go forward or go back. All right, let's look at the back first, going back. Verse 10, Pharaoh's army draws nigh. The children of Israel are sore afraid, and they cry out to the Lord. And they're crying out to the Lord. They've complained to Moses in verse 11. Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Renee, they, what they saw when they saw that army, it took away. They walked by sight in that moment. It robbed them of all that God had done in the last few weeks in that land. And even the Scripture says God brought them out with a high hand. And a high hand don't mean with hands raised in the air. He brought them out and He left Egypt in shambles. And here they are, the people of God, following Moses. And God has taken care of them. And they said now, when they see the armies of Pharaoh come, when they see the enemy come, when they hear the rambling of the wheels, when they hear the neighing of the horses, when they see the dust plumes come up, they take their eyes off of the cloud of the Lord God. They take their eyes off of the presence of God and they look to the enemy and their hearts melt. I say to you, church, any time we look back and say it was better back there, it was better then, it was better when, we've taken our eyes off of God's future promise. It's always better with the Lord. He gives us manna, his manna, his mercies are new and tender each and every day. So the people of Pharaoh have been deceived. They've been beat down, now they're going to get them. We're going to go get them. The people of God have also been deceived. If God be for us, who can be against us? But yet they take their eyes off of the Lord and they look back and they see the enemy. And they immediately, in verse 11, they say to Moses, we're fixing to die. It would have been better off that we died in Egypt. Brother and sister, let me bring to your attention this morning, 150 years from now, 150 years from now, everybody in this congregation will be dead. My body will be dust if the Lord Jesus has not returned. What I'm saying to you, both the just and the unjust will die. As the scripture says, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. But the unjust say, it is right. But the just say, it's a blessing from God. It's how we view the circumstance. Now the Egyptians were deceived. We're going, they hadn't took them. They hadn't controlled this God for the last weeks and months in Egypt. And now here in the wilderness, we're going to defeat them. Oh no, they're not. Oh no, they're not. We know the rest of the story, don't we? And now, the Israelites, who have been redeemed and brought out of Egypt, and now they're at this sea where there is plenty of water, but yet they don't know how to go forward from here. They've been trusting God, trusting God, trusting God. And when they get to an immovable object, the first thing they say is, it would have been better to die back yonder. Brother and sister, let's die in the arms of Jesus. Because that's not death, that's victory. We pass from death to life. All right, let's quickly look on here. Um, verse 11, the last part there says, Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Moses didn't bring them out of Egypt. The Lord God brought them out. You see, it, 
it's just the natural thing. When we look at the natural, we can't, we can't hardly look or believe in the supernatural. Everyone here this morning has been born again knows that Jesus Christ did not die on that cross right there. But He did die on the cross roughly 2,000 years ago outside of Jerusalem so that you and I could not worship this cross today but worship the resurrected Christ who died on that cross for you and me. Now, do you agree with me that I would rather die with Jesus than without Jesus? Because you see, as a child of God, I've been without Jesus, so have you. What peace did I have? I feared tonight. I feared the future. And I didn't know what to do in the present till Jesus came to me. Till He came to me. And He made Himself known to me by some, or by one. I know there were others that were praying for me. There were people at Berlin Baptist Church that were praying for me. My sister-in-law, my Sunday school teacher, uh, my sister-in-law's alive. Uh, Miss Skipper is already gone to glory. Uh, my mom was. My daddy never said anything to me. I'm certain that my daddy was. I'm certain that other people were because they told me on the night that I publicly confessed Jesus Christ, I've been praying for you. I want you to know that's a good thing when someone's calling your name out to God. But you can call out to God. You can call out to God, child of God. And if you're lost, you can call on the names above every name. And the first thing and the only thing that you can call out to Christ for is not to pay my debt. It's not to give me a new knee. It's not to get rid of this cancer. But the first thing that you can call out to Jesus for as led by the Spirit, Lord, forgive my sin. Capital M-Y, my sin. So that when we have our eyes on Jesus... The enemies look manageable, don't they? We have our eyes on Jesus, the mountains look like hills. When we have our eyes on Jesus, the waves look like a highway. When we have our eyes on Jesus, the doctor says there's no hope. Our eyes on Jesus, all things are possible to him that believeth. When we have our eyes on Jesus. Have our eyes on Jesus going forward. Are you going to continue to go forward? Are you, wh why would you go? Why would you turn another direction? If we look through the eyes of our head, if we look through the natural eyes, if we look as things would naturally appear to us, it seems insurmountable. I'm not saying to you that everything in our country is fixing to be turned over in the next uh, year. Know what I'm saying to you? It does not matter about the state of this country. Our God is bigger than our need. So we need to be praying for our country and our leaders. We also need to be praying for Jesus Christ as the leader and head of this church. Lead us on, O oh Lord God eternal. Lead us on. Do you think it is by happenstance that we have seen with our eyes what we have seen in these last weeks and months in this church. The same for them. Do you think it's just a, a fluke? Do you think it's just, um, do you think it's somebody that's done something? Do, you th do I think that it's something? Well, now, God is rewarding my favor. I believe it is the work of Almighty God that God is blessing us in spite of us and saving souls in our midst. So that the prospect for this church is, what's the Lord going to do next? Not fearfully, but anticipating, Lord, what are you going to do next? Because there's nothing beyond Him. There's nothing too big for Him. We're not facing anything that's unknown to God. I face things and you face things all the time that's unknown to us. God has not given me a view into the future except spiritually through His Word that I know what's going on in this world is going to lead to Jesus Christ returning. But when He comes, He's coming for you and He's coming for me. And so that we need to turn our eyes back to Jesus. So the people were looking at the Egyptians and they thought, well, we're fixing to die and it'd been better if we'd never come out here if we hadn't been out here, we could have died back in Egypt. Do you know what their life was back in Egypt? That because of Moses being sent by God to tell Pharaoh, let my people go, 
that they had to get their own straw to make their brick. If I could remember the King James, they were not to diminish their tally. They had to gather the straw and maintain making the same amount of bricks. In other words, to follow Jesus, to even hear the name of God, their lives had become harsher. Brother and sister, I want my suffering to be in this life and in this life only. Because heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And I hope that is what you are looking forward to. That you don't want to turn away from that. That there's nothing in your past. I, I, I hear uh, people ask me, uh, sometimes I haven't seen someone, you know, in 15 or 20 years, and I probably don't remember their name, but we talk, and, and they will say something like this, do you miss them hogs? Not really. Not really. Uh, what do I miss? To tell you right now, I miss, I miss this. I miss squatting down and getting right back up. I can't stand to see my granddaughter sit there on the floor and say, Papa, get here down here and crawl. Crawl, Papa. And she'll just be sitting on her, her behind and pull her feet up on her and just stand straight up. You seen them kids do that, Miss Vicky? I say, Lord, how that, did I ever do anything like that? I got to hold on something with one knee on the floor to get up with the other knee. So I miss, I miss the youth. As close as I have been to my youth in the last three years, I told my wife the other day, I said, I remember laying in the hospital in the emergency room about two years ago, July will be two years ago, with a kidney stone, and they gave me a shot of tour, darling. Brother Mark, in about five minutes, I moved my neck. Oh, boy, I feel so good. And I moved my knees. No, I, nothing hurt. You know what I'm saying, folks? They were some dope in me and nothing hurt. Brother and sister, one of these days, this old body going to lay down. This spirit going to be free. And I'm going to see the king. I'm going to keep my eyes on him because he is our future. And he is our very present help in time of need. He is all that we need. Do not look back. Do not say, well, I, I would that I had done this. I would that I had done that. Press toward the mark or the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Go forward, church. Go forward. For that is our victory. Not in our past. Our victory is in our faith. And that the Lord God can provide. I'll close with this. Moses was told by the Lord, said, tell the people, you hold your rod, your staff out over the water. And the Lord said, I'm going to make a way. I'm paraphrasing. And I'm still naive enough to believe and foolish enough to believe that where Paul taught the church at Corinth that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish, I believe that the preaching of the crossing of the Red Sea, the opening up of the sea, a wall to the right and a wall to the left, and dry ground in the middle where the people, that is foolishness to the world. But my friend, it is wisdom to the people of God. God made a way for his people. He will make a way for you. He has made a way for me. And when those circumstances come that are so bitter, so bitter, so very bitter, and we wonder, how will I get through this, Lord? That's the first question you should ask. Lord, how are you going to get me across this? How are you going to get me through this? Brother, did you ever ask the Lord in the last couple of months, how are we going to go forward, Lord? How are we going to go forward? And by the grace of God, you sit here in the house of God today with one that was not sitting by you previous to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, only the Lord can take the bitter and make us better. Satan will take the bitter and will kill our taste buds. But Jesus, oh, what the Lord did for those people, stand still and see the salvation of God. God will do it for you. If you're here today and have not accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, why not now? Why not now? 
If you're here today and you're struggling with a circumstance in your life, I don't have the answer, but I have this answer. Trust Jesus. If you're a child of God, trust Jesus. And the opposite of that will be this. Instead of trusting Jesus, you'll trust yourself. And where has self ever got me? In trouble. In trouble. Come to Jesus today. He is the way. He is the hope. He is our life. Dear Lord, I would pray, Father, in the moments that would be taking place during this invitation, there would be a soul searching on the part of those that are lost, that, Father God, they would feel the depths of their depravity. They would feel the depths of their iniquity, the weight of their sin. Lord, that would so easily beset them. And, Father God, not rob them, but keep them, Heavenly Father, from heaven itself, because sin says, I can handle it. But Heavenly Father, repentance says, Lord, only you can handle this. And I would pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to you so they might confess, Jesus, you're all that I need. I pray, Father, for those brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, that are struggling with health or they're struggling with their, maybe their finance at the moment. And, Lord God, they're seeing an insurmountable mountain. Maybe, maybe Heavenly Father, is something that, that I have not even addressed, but, Lord God, that is uppermost in their mind. I would ask you, Lord, now, as your son and your daughter, God, you speak to them and tell them, that you have this. Lord, that you already know the way, and they are to wait upon you, and their strength shall be renewed. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.